Foundation, we've come to understand that access to broadband and the skills to use it are fundamental to everything that we care about as a foundation. Equal opportunity, education, health care, accountable and effective government, business growth, engaged citizens, and ultimately vibrant communities themselves all depend on world-class broadband. But as Senator Klobuchar said, ensuring that all people, especially people living in rural places and on tribal lands, have access to world-class broadband and the skills to use it is hard. It's going to take all of us, all sectors of society, working together to get it done. Not for profits, business, government, everybody has a part to play. And that's what this conference is all about, advancing the vision together. We've gathered here today to address the reality that Minnesotans without access to high-speed broadband and the ability to use it are denied the equal opportunity to participate fully in community life. Based on how FCC defines broadband, as the Senator said, uh, Greater Minnesotans suffer uh, relative to urbans in terms of access to broadband with only about 23% of households in Greater Minnesota having access as it's currently defined by FCC. And Minnesota remains in the middle of the pack nationally in broadband rankings, a fact that doesn't sit well at all with our above average self-image as a state. Will leaders like you see the impact of broadband or the lack of it every day as you work to maintain the prosperity of your communities? The lack of quality broadband in towns and in the rural countryside has a crippling impact on the increasing, that increasingly cannot be overcome by the traditional quality of life factors that rurals often usually had, like tax incentives or economic development, marketing. These are high stakes. Getting this right to Minnesota really matters. A mere 25 years since the creation of the World Wide Web, broadband has become the indispensable infrastructure of our age. And as the stories of the early pioneers in this work remind us, it's up to us to get this done. At last year's conference, participants worked together to create a broadband vision for Minnesota, the vision that Mayor Larson was referring to in her remarks. And here's what it says. Everyone in Minnesota will be able to use convenient, affordable, world-class broadband networks that enable us to survive and thrive in our communities and across the globe. There are four key concepts in the vision. I thought it was really cool that the mayor pick, picked up on this. Everyone. Again, that's the idea about ubiquity. Everybody. It includes all of us. Urban, rural, suburban, students, residents, everybody. Affordable. So price is really important, but it's only one component of affordability. Working from home, convenient completion of homework and online classes, and home telehealth all increase affordability. And world class. High speed, reliable, and redundant networks are required to be globally competitive and to be competitive with well-connected neighboring towns and countries. After all, we're all not just competing with Wisconsin anymore. Both wired and wireless networks are necessary. Both are necessary in today's connected world. I, I'm fond of, I like the metaphor, it works for me, that wireless networks um, without wireline are like airplanes without airports. They just don't work without wireline connections. And survive and thrive. Broadband is an essential service. It's comparable, we all know this, to roads and clean water and electricity. And the ability to retrain, retain and attract business and people is impacted significantly by the quality and availability of broadband. So since this vision was first articulated by the participants in last year's conference, dozens of organizations have joined to formally endorse it. Endorsers have shared their vis this vision with their elected officials, with local media across the state, and it's been a really powerful tool in focusing legislators' attention on the need to invest in this infrastructure. There are a lot of ways to get this done. There's no one right answer. But the theme here, as I've mentioned, is that it's going to take all of us working together, all sectors, to get it done.
And the private sector in Minnesota has made significant investments in broadband infrastructure. And we really value those, infra those investments, but we also recognize that all that they're, they're doing to invest in the next generation of technology is just not enough, that market forces alone will not attract the required capital investment to achieve our vision. Making sure that everybody is connected is such a monumental task that we cannot let the provider community shoulder the burden alone. Public sector participation is also needed. In Minnesota, we can be proud that we have, in fact, created a mechanism for public dollars to be made available to bring robust broadband to un and underserved Minnesotans. And today, we'll have a chance to check in with and hear firsthand from the folks working on the front lines all across our state to build some of the networks that have been funded in part by Deeds Border to Border Broadband Grants Program. Our hope is that this close up and in person look and interaction with the people building these networks and the possibilities that they are bringing to their communities will inspire us, inspire us to redouble our efforts to advocate for and to promote better broadband across the state. Today we're also going to be honoring and hearing from some of the many known and unknown Minnesotans who 25 years ago at the dawn of the internet age began the hard work of figuring out how to work together better to ensure that Minnesota got connected to the new information highway. We hope that reflecting back on their story will inspire, inspire us to roll up our sleeves and get back to work in anticipation of the next legislative session when these conversations are going to be taken up again. We hope that you'll take full advantage of the opportunities here today to connect, to learn, and recharge in your programs, and they're out here if you haven't picked one up, are the details of the day. But here are just some quick housekeeping announcements to help you get the most out of the day and stay comfortable.